My name is Monty Parks. I'm a historic programmer with Harris County Precinct 4. Today we're going to be talking about the Akokisa native tribe that lived in southeast Texas. They are part of a larger group called the Atakapa, who are based and centered around Lake Charles, Louisiana, and have groups that go all the way up to the Huntsville area. The Akokisa were never a large group. They were small in numbers, but they used Spring, Cypress Creek, the San Jacinto River, and the Trinity River for all of their needs and for where they lived. Their name actually means river people. The Akokisa have been in Southeast Texas for at least 2,000 years. There's archeological records around Spring and Cypress Creek, as well as on Galveston Island, dating back to about 100 AD. The Akokisa were a very primitive group of hunters and gatherers who believed that their first ancestors were cast up from the ocean in a giant oyster shell. So water has significance in every aspect of their life. The water gave them transportation, it gave them homes, it gave them food. So they set up along the creeks and along the rivers using long dugout canoes to move up and down the river. Prior to European contact, very little is known about their everyday life, except through archeological records. We do know that they spent part of the year along the creeks in North Harris County and the other parts of the year down along the coast at Galveston Island. They were opposite of the Karankoa, who also spent half of the year on Galveston. The Akokisa stayed in the wintertime along the creeks in Harris County, migrating in the summertime to Galveston, where they lived in Chiquis, elevated huts along the beach, and they fished and dug reeds from the bay. That was their main food source during the summertime. In the wintertime, they came out along the creeks and they hunted for bear, bison, deer, and edible fruits and edible vegetables that they could find around the ground. They never had large villages and never cultivated crops, unlike most other native tribes who at least seasonally planted crops. The Akokisa were a very non-aggressive tribe. They had friendships and kinships with the Caddo Indians to the north and east, as well as the other Atakapa groups. One of their roles that they filled pre European contact was as a middleman between the trade between the Apaches in South Texas and the Caddo's in Northeast Texas. So they were constantly carrying trade goods back and forth between the two groups. They also had several trade items that they collected themselves. The two chief among those being asphaltum, which is the black tar-like substance that sometimes rolls up onto the beaches at Galveston Island. It was used for glues and for thatching and was very well sought of by groups that did not live at the coast. They also dug red ochre from the ground and they traded that. The pigment in red ochre was used for tattooing and all native tribes in North America practice some form of tattooing. So the ochre was very well sought after as well. They did not have access to stone. Stone is not found native here in Southeast Texas. So any stone that they would have received had to be traded for. So instead they used bone for all of their tools and also for their hunting weapons. They would shave down tools, make arrowheads and spear points out of the stone. Even though they were non-aggressive, they were very fierce warriors when needed to be. And like every other native tribe in Texas, they did practice ritualized cannibalism. They did not eat other people for sustenance, but if they killed a warrior in battle, they might eat pieces of him for two reasons. One, to take that warrior's strength for themselves, but also because their religious beliefs said a person could not make it to the afterlife unless his body was whole. So by eating a part of a downed enemy, they were keeping them from entering the afterlife and getting to heaven. They also believed that anyone bit by snake and dying of snake bite 
was denied the afterlife. They were a maternal system who traced their lineage through the females in the family. So when a son married, they came and lived with the mother's family as opposed to a paternal system where they would have lived with the father's family or the husband's family. So maternal instinct was very strong in them and the women had a large role in their everyday life. When the Spanish finally made contact with the Acoquises in the early 1500s, they named the creek behind us, Spring Creek, the Rio Santa Rosa. On the high bluff behind us, there was a village from the Acoquisa described. At that village, there were freshwater springs that were probably artesian in nature. And when the Spanish bathed in those streams, they felt rejuvenated and they considered them a fountain of youth. And they named the bluffs the Springs of Santa Rosa. So we have the Santa Rosa River, the Springs of Santa Rosa, and native activity along that high bluff. There are three written records, historic records, describing what can only be this site along Spring Creek. We're standing here near one of the Bender Lakes along the Spring Creek Greenway near Jesse Jones Park. The lakes here were formed from an old channel of Spring Creek thousands of years ago. It's deep and spring fed and would have provided the Akokisa with fresh water, fish, as well as shelter and protection from the elements. Near this area, we have found lots of different artifacts relating to the Akokisa that date back to the five and 600 AD. The Akokisa had no contact with Europeans until about 1523 when Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca and a group of Spanish sailors were shipwrecked on Galveston Island. After spending a very rough winter there, a group of Akokisa rescued them from the island and took them to live in one of their villages along Spring Creek. Cabeza de Vaca ends up spending seven years wandering Texas, looking to get back to the Spanish settlements of Mexico. When he returns to Mexico and to Spain, he writes a relation, a revelation about his travels in Texas. And most of what we know about the Acoquisa prior to European contact comes from his writings. It took about another 200 years for the Akokisa to be contacted a second time by European powers. This time it was a French group with a sailor named Samars del Belisle, who similar to the Vaca was shipwrecked on Galveston Island and captured by the Akokisa. He spent about 18 months living along Spring Creek and wrote very detailed stories of the area and everyday life of the Akokisa. He writes about their religion, he writes about their rituals, their hunting parties, as well as war parties. When he's finally rescued by French traders, he goes back to New Orleans and they put him back on a ship and send him right back to Galveston Island where he runs into the same group of Akokisas who had held him captive a year and a half before. They took six or eight of these Akokisa to New Orleans with them and recorded their language. So even though the Akokisas are considered a dead tribe, their language is very well known and very well recorded. Also during this period in New Orleans, a French painter named Alexander de Botts painted a scene of a Indian village with an Akokisa warrior visiting them. That is the only known painting of an Akokisa that we have in history. A few years later, because of the French making overtures towards Southeast Texas, the Spanish finally got around to exploring Harris County and the surrounding areas. They sent three or four different military operations to this area looking for French traders to arrest them or to run them out of Spanish Texas. During the 1740s and 1750s, Spain renewed their objective of setting up missions in Texas. 
they looked for a place to put a mission up for the Akokisa and the related tribes of Southeast Texas. Their first thought was to be near the confluence of Spring and Cypress Creek, near a village that was run by an Akokisa chief that the Spanish named Antonio El Gordo. That did not work and later on Spanish powers decided to move the mission for the Akokisas to the Trinity River near where Anahuac is today. So the Akokisa had to go to missions from Spring Creek all the way to near Anahuac along the Trinity River. The Akokisa did not like mission life and very few of them were ever converted to Christianity. A few years later, during the American Revolution, the Spanish governor of Texas, Bernardo Galvez, decided that he was going to assist the American army because Spain was at war with England at the same time. Obviously, there weren't British soldiers to fight along Texas and Louisiana. So instead, Galvez gathered up a group of Atacapa and Acoquisas and a herd of cattle and drove cattle from East Texas to Tennessee to give to the Continental Army. On their way back to Texas, they detoured to Pensacola, Florida and started capturing British forts along the U.S. Gulf Coast. When they were done with the battles and got back to Texas, Galvez in his writings talks about the ability of the Akokisa as warriors as well as cattle drivers and he wanted to use them to export cattle to the newly founded United States. That never really happened, but that was his vision. Later on, the Akokisa retreated deeper into the woods of East Texas as Spanish and French presence grew up around them. And then Stephen F. Austin comes with his settlers and settle the exact same area where the Akokisa lived. The Akokisa being the shy, group that they were did not really want to have contact with Europeans because by this time French and Spanish diseases had started to dwindle their numbers. By the time Anglos arrived along Spring Creek there were less than 300 Akokisa total. So the Akokisa started to retreat closer or back towards their ancestral homelands around Lake Charles and joined other Atacapa groups and by 1840, they ceased to exist in Southeast Texas. There were, however, one small group that lived in the Tomball area until the 1920s. There was a place in Tomball that used to be called Indian Hill, and there was a small village with about eight or 10 Akokisa living in this little village. They would trade fish for fresh bread with the settlers in the area. Sometime around 1922, the exchanges just stopped and the settlers of the area never had any other contact. So we're not sure exactly where they went. Modern day today, the Atacapa and the Akokisa are trying to become federally recognized. They're saying they're not extinct, that they really still are here. And for the last 10 to 12 years, they've been fighting a battle trying to utilize DNA records as well as census records so that they can become federally recognized. For more information about Harris County and our Parks Department, please visit us online. And thank you very much for coming out and enjoying this video and learning about the history of Southeast Texas.